All right, so we are starting today with Isaiah 18 and we will go to 19. We're gonna go ahead and pray in and I will go ahead and pray us in. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. We come humbly to your throne today, asking you just to lead and guide us as we read your word. Please let us take from it each individually and collectively what you have for us so that we can continue to make our way through our week and as we go into the coming months, please protect our families and our home. We thank you so much as you prepare us mentally um, and spiritually to take in this word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So chapter 18, this is a really short one, seven verses. Um, does anybody want to tackle that one or you want me to take it? Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> um, how about Brittany, yeah, <laughs> she knew I was going to pick her. <laughs> Woe to the land, shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in vessels of bulrushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled, to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation metered out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled, all ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lifted, lifteth up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. For so the Lord said unto me, I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon earth, and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For afore the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the springs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth, and the fowls shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled, and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation metered out and trodden underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. All right, in chapter 19, and I'll do a summary after we kind of get through both of these. I think they kind of lead into each other. Uh, let me just check here. Okay, yeah. The um, uh, verse one of 19, the burden against Egypt, behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter at his presence and the heart of Egypt will melt in, in its midst. I will set Egyptians against Egyptians Everyone will fight against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fail in its midst. I will destroy their council and they will consult the idols and the charmers, the medi mediums and the sorcerers. And the Egyptians I will give into the hand of a cruel master and a fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts. The waters will fail from the sea and the river will be wasted and dried up. The rivers will, will turn foul. The brooks of defense will be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the rushes will wither. The papyrus reeds by the river, by the mouth of the river, and everything sown by the river will wither, be driven away, and be no more. The fishermen will also mourn. All those will lame it who cast hooks into the river and they will languish who spread nets on the waters. Moreover, those who work in fine flax and those who weave fine fabric will be ashamed and its foundation will be broken. And all those who make wages will be, tr be troubled of the soul, will be troubled of soul. And let's see here. I'll do a couple more verses here. Uh, so surely the princes of Zoan are fools Pharaoh's white, wise counselors give foolish counsel. How do you say to Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of the ancient kings? Where are they? Where are your wise men? Let me tell you now and let them know what the Lord of hosts has purposed against Egypt. 
And then Desarina, if you'll take 13 to 25 there. Okay. So the Prince of Zorn are become fools. The Prince of Noth are received. They have also seduced Egypt. Even they that are the state of the tribes thereof. The the Lord at mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every word thereof, as a drunken man struggleth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head of the head or tail branch or rush may do. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shake it over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Everyone that make it mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he had determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation, yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day shall there, shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the, ter be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land. Whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hand, and Israel my inheritance. All right. Thank you, ladies. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to uh, verse 18 and begin to break this down and understand it better. Okay. So the first thing we kind of want to know, excuse me. <laughs> um, well, let me ask first, um, was there anything that you guys took from these two chapters that we can point out and start our discussion with? It sounds like judgment is going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Karen. I I I wanna even go as far as to say because a lot of these um children didn't repent. That's why it's um occurring. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the chapter 18, um, very, very good. Um, yes, both of these are about judgment coming on uh, the different uh, lands and people. Um, it's talking about the Assyrians in chapter, actually chapter 18 and 19. And then of course the Egyptians as well as the um, Israelites. And God is also letting them know like he will forgive people and purify them when he's, ready to um he's in control of everything so he's doing everything in his own time um mm -hmm. it he sends like you said an invitation for everyone to repent and a promise of grace 
um, in chapter 19, it talks about he will send them a savior and a mighty one. He will all he will deliver them. So that's the foreshadowing of Jesus coming, him sending Jesus down here to give us a, a chance of salvation. Um, we do have to follow his way of the rules that he sets out. And unfortunately, the Israelites didn't follow um, that exactly. And so that's why they are still coming under um, God's judgment as well. Uh, let's see what else we can. I'm going to read a little bit more of 18 here and see. He talks about pruning in chapter, I mean, excuse me, in verse five. For before the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripened in the flower, he will both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. Um, that again is just kind of grooming us to go the right direction. I think that's what I'm kind of getting from that. Um, let me see. I'm just going to check um, kind of a summary thing that I go to and see if there's anything else. Okay. So, yeah, kind of going back to God's timing and him doing things the way that he wants to is always going to be his way, his timing. Um, we don't know exactly you know, what his timing is exactly, but he's always going to provide a way, groom us, like I said, trim us, make us more refined in his spirit. If we go to verse four and 18, it says, for, for so the Lord said to me, I will take my rest, meaning he will take his rest, and I will look from my dwelling place like qu clear heat and sunshine, like a cloud of dew and the heat of harvest. And then he kind of goes into that harvest scene part of um, pruning them. So he's kind of just stepping back, assessing the situation, deciding when he wants to act on it, when he wants to intervene and kind of watching people because he's seeing how terrible they're acting. Just like now, he's kind of sitting back watching us and he's giving us little signs and he's trying to groom each one of us saying, hey, that's not the way to go. Giving us little pr prompts or bumpers to protect us. And then yet, if we continue down uh, the path, it says in verse seven, a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation powerful and treading down whose land the rivers divide to a place of the name of the Lord of hosts to Mount Zion. So they're supposed to be going towards Mount Zion and then uh, like going towards Christ, basically. Um, then we get into the part of chapter nine about Egypt, the burden against Egypt, behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter at his presence. The heart of Egypt will melt in its mist. Um, and then now he starts to act in verse two of 19. I will set Egyptians against Egyptians. Everyone will fight against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. Um, it goes on to continue through all the different people, the fishermen. Uh, who else did they talk about? I think the fine, uh, fine fabric. So like women weaving that, you know, just basically everyone um, is going to have their judgment come. And like you, like you were saying, Brittany, have time to repent. All that time in between there before it just gets to a heated culmination. Then and things getting out of control, he makes sure he acts and intervenes. I think it's like very imperative to the time that we're living in right now, the times that we're living in right now. It just for me, these two chapters are right on point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um it's a lot of uh I think we've been talking about it for quite a while though. It's it's just a lot of um taking time to self to uh tune into the holy spirit that lies within us all you know in mm -hmm. order to be able to take heed of the warning the signs the symbols we get distracted a lot when we're just so overly involved with the world 
Mm-hmm. But when you take that time, you know, it's important because we don't want to be on the wrong side when judgment is at hand. Perfectly That's put. True. Perfectly put. Thank you, Brittany. You are. That's perfectly put. And yeah, Isaiah, as we're reading these, a lot of it seems repetitive. And like you said, it's just like we're given time. You know, even us now, we're like, you can kind of feel God's like patience in that. Because as we read it, we're like, okay, we read this again. He's given more patience, more grace. Like, you know, when are we going to kind of talk about something different? And that's, unfortunately, after all of this time, people are still sinning. People haven't repented. People are going the wrong way. And I'm not talking about everyone else. I'm talking all of us. We're all sinners. So I'm not pointing yeah. 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 And it's like, we still just aren't listening. <laughs> we just aren't getting it. We just, and like you said, it's because there's so many things. There's distractions, distraction after distraction coming to try to pull us away. Um, that's and, the temptations. Yeah. And it's just part of living. It's part of being a human. It's part of what we're going to go through. That's why he puts his grace out there because he knows it's, you know, it, we're already in a fallen world. We're already against the odds. And the only way to get over that the only way to overcome it is through him and you know day by day he's giving us grace and, and training us like i said transforming us um, by the holy spirit to become more like christ yeah. and the more we stick with him we'll have things like peace and joy as we try to conquer these different obstacles that are that are there i mean we have to go through it I think, too, it's important to remember that he's the only one true living God that um, he has given us grace and mercy, but he wants us to connect with him, have a personal relationship with him. And, you know, just after seeing the generations and generations and generations of people that don't even seek him out, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and then that's that where they talk about where he well basically he says he's going to come he's going to destroy all the other fake gods that people are believing in uh, which is going to melt their hearts because he wants us to carry him in our hearts at all time and so that we'll be armored against like the temptation and those um you know obstructions and things that keep us from from being close to him Yes, yes. Were you guys able to hear hear her? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, I agree. Excellent. I absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's um highlighted in nineteen three. The spirit of Egypt will fell in its midst. I will destroy their council, and they will consult the idols and the charmers, the mediums, and the sorcerers. And um, it and it, uh, I'll read verse four. And the Egyptians I will give unto the hand of the cruel of a cruel master, and a fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, which is God the Father. Um, and Egypt is kind of more of a mindset. Um, they were focused on money, um, you know, all the gold and things like that. They had they had a lot of gods. They had a lot of um, um, lost my train of thought there. I'm sorry. Just a lot of outside interest. It wasn't on the one true God. And so they obviously were going going astray, had a lot of different um, beliefs and worshiping and different things that were going on there. And that's one of the top commandments is to have no other God before me. And so, yeah, he when he decides, when he decides to, you know, make that final judgment, he, he, he he's going to let it all out. I, I I just want mm-hmm. to say this, and I, I haven't really. I've been so sick, I haven't had time to finish the, the sermon that I wanted to do for you guys, um, because he really, really does want you to know who he is. So within, it, it, he's so complex that I found myself just delving off into this and delving off into that because it was so fascinating. Like you know, I mean, here you have. A, a, a supreme being that is so intense yet so gentle at the same time mm-hmm. um, because he has smote a few people you know, just straight up you know but then at the same time you see all these centuries of his mercy and grace 
you know, trying to give us chances before it destroys everything once again. Mm -hmm. And we just still keep doing what we're doing. But um, the thing that I want you guys to kind of remember and walk away with is that um, God, you know, when people say God, there's there's many different mm -hmm. gods. So he is the only one true living father. So like when you pray and Jesus tells you to pray, you know, our father who art in heaven, um, basically you're not supposed to call any other person father because that's reserved for him. Um, and, you know, just use dad or whatever. Um, I can't really learn the scripture or read that in, but I just found that fascinating in itself. Um, because he's saying that he is the one true father, you know, no one's going to take care of you and protect you like he will, you know, and that's what we expect from the male um, uh, person that's in our lives generally, you know, he's supposed to be the strong person, the, the you know, the last, the last voice or answer or whatever, you know, um, the stronghold foot of the, of the family foundation, you know, so basically if you can kind of think of him like that and also remember that God itself is just a title mm -hmm. that is not Yahweh or Jehovah you know um, right. it, 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 I, I can probably I, I can explain it later I, I'll try to make sure that I get I'm feeling a little better now so I'll try to get my sermon thing but I kind of go into the titles and, and stuff like that um, but the word God is actually just a title, and that's where you get all these different gods. Like it'll seem like you know people are are worshiping different gods, but God has many names. You know, our Father in heaven, He has many names. Um, but I remember distinctly there's a chapter in there that when He's asked who sh He was going to send them somewhere, and they said, well, "Who shall we say mm -hmm. uh, sent us?" Sent us. Right. And He says. You know, like what name should, should we tell him? Or he said, just tell him I am. Mm -hmm. And so I always remembered that. And I always remember, you know, the, the whole, you know, the title God is, is not just him. You know, that's just that's just a title for people of supreme being. Like, like Mrs. Or like Mrs. Deity, yeah, you know, uh -huh. like Mr. That. or Mrs. or something but like that. If you're speaking mm -hmm. directly to him and for him, you know, he says he is the only one true living God, the only father of you and for you because he's never against you. And he'll tell you, I've never ever left you. You've left me, you know? So that's what a lot of this is basically saying to me just over and over and over again. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I love you guys so much, but you keep trying my patience, you know? Um, so when you think about, not you know praying or you know people talk about oh you believe in that you know mess that's just a concoction or you know it, it, it's just a fairy tale i mean i heard it all you know? um but you know you, you talk to who you can talk to you, you try to instill belief into whom is who will listen and like he said the people that really are truly his believers and followers they're going to hear going to hear so, you know, you can talk to you blue in the face of some people, they still deny it, you know, but, you know, just, just keep going at the pace you're on, keep believing, keep having your Bible studies, you know, and consistently pray to the one and only true father. He will hear you. He will hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us of that. I definitely um, agree in every, with everything you said. I just want to say to us, too, so always remember we're, we're, we're told to test the spirit. Test the spirit so that you, you know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it, it says seek him out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you know or not, but wisdom is female. And so, yeah, there's a council right. up there, just like there's, you know, like the hierarchy we have down here, basically, kind of, you know, one person down Paul leading everybody um but um it, you know the, the more you seek him the more wisdom helps you you know um 
you'll find yourself delving into things and, and find a solace and a peace unlike anything else. Um, and that's what I like about it. Um, I, I don't, you know, even when I was coming up, I didn't like really, I, it's kind of like, I, I didn't really have like a home church because my dad, my mother and dad were Jehovah's Witness, my grandma was Baptist. Um, the girl that I was um, roommates with in college was, uh, uh, what's the one, Pentecostal. Um, you know, so <laughs> um, a couple of my girlfriends are Methodists, you know, so I kind of been around everything. But the, the basic thing is, is that you got to have a personal relationship with him where you seek him out. And you know, talk to him. Let him know who you are. Just like like you like you talk to one of your parents. You know, you said he is the father, and he already knows you. So it should be easy for most people, but they just don't do it. It's just that simple. Choose to do something else. And everything else takes over their day, and that's why you have so many that are, people that are depressed and you know suicidal and relationships don't work out you know they just need to keep it simple you know say some prayers you know you know quit worrying about what the people next door have and i don't have this and that and be thankful for yeah. that we we do. we're eating every day we have clothes you know it ain't like we out there walking around butt naked you know it's you know, you'll provide your basic needs now all this extra stuff that you might want me to not do and then maybe you will you know might get lucky mm -hmm. at the lottery or something but um you know I, I, to me I, I always think of him as always going to you know they always say people that that believe are crazy you know oh, look at that crazy person out there holding up that sign you know it'd be like John 3 16 or something middle of the street <laughs> looking like a bum and people were just staring and looking and doubting and, you know, all this like that. But, you know, he may be one of the anointed people, you know, because at least he's out there showing people who got it, you know, saying, hey, you need to get back, get back on the right path. Because we all know the path to redemption is very, very narrow. There's going to be a lot of people falling off the edge on, on the way. They think they're going to heaven. A lot of people think they're going to go to church and pay their way into heaven. You know, just be nasty to people all week long, you know. Like, just take, just think about it. People in the office, you know, they always got something going at the lot. You know what I mean? Like, talking about this person, talking about that, you know, or, you know, trying to, somebody got the, the position that they wanted, you know, and they, they mad at them. You know, they want to kill everybody, you know, but, you know, maybe that person worked super hard to get it and really, really deserved it. But we don't look at stuff like that. We have to change our mindset to let the father in, you know, let him let him do his magic, you know, let him do his work. He, he does everything in his time. And that's the right time. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when we want stuff, we, we ain't ready for it, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so, I, you know, I, I really want to, you know, I went to school to be, be like a psychologist. I really want to help some of these young people because they just seem lost. You know, they, they're so busy running um, around, you know, worrying about worldly stuff that they're not really thinking about their heavenly or spiritual life. But I'm done. <laughs> so what I'd, what I'd like to do, ladies, and thank you very, very, very much for your input. That was right on point. Um, yeah. I uh, would like us for next Bible study, which would be, oh, actually going to not be until, I don't think it's next week. It's the last week of the month, which actually kind of works out perfect. Give me just a second. I just want to double check. Yeah, on the 24th. So on the 24th, in the meantime, um, we probably won't get through all the chapters, but I want to um, challenge us with trying to get through some of Isaiah. Um, you, you don't have to, um, like I said, it's kind of story after story of God's grace, um, all the stuff that we've been talking about, um, doing repentance and, and foreshadowing of what's to come. 
but I want us to finish up Isaiah this month. Um, again, you don't have to read all the chapters in between, um, but we're going to do chapter 65 and 66. Those are the last two chapters of Isaiah. So we're going to like fast forward our Isaiah study here. And I think there's some important things um, just to kind of finish this up and be kind of a segue, be a transition into some of the other topics uh, about God, because this is where he strongly, I think, really is getting at kind of the same thing she's saying, building a relationship with him. Um, I won't go into everything, but we've talked about some of it here. Um, so we'll finish up with 65 and 66 on June 24th. If you want to read some more of Isaiah, just to, for yourself to kind of get through that that part and link everything, um, you're more than welcome to do that in these coming weeks. Um, and then I will bring another Bible study, or if anybody else has anything on their heart that the Lord puts on their heart in the meantime, we will start a new Bible study that uh, after that. I don't think I have a date set for the next time, but I'll, I'll get something out to you guys on what dates for July. Um, are you guys, matter of fact, are you guys thinking about taking a vacation or anything on the 4th of July? Or sticking around or probably don't might not know right now. What day is that? Go look at it right now. On a now. Thursday. No. I'm not coming. I think I'm going to be here locally. I think I will too. Okay. So we can, well, we can think about it too. Um, July, July first. Um, because also in July we're gonna do our activity together, where we go out and do something fun together, and just uh support each other. Um, That'd have some cool. yeah, have some good old fashioned fun. So I was thinking that July first we can go out and do something fun. That's just that following week after we finish up Isaiah, because we've done so well, so well. Everybody's been coming and putting input and I really appreciate you guys and so we'll come together and do something fun and then we will yeah because I haven't met a Desiree yet yeah <laughs> I was gonna ask though um does it have to be on a weekday because I I will be starting a new job next week thank god um and congratulations yes thank congratulations. you <laughs> thank you um I and the days that I know I'm going to have off are going to be Friday or Saturday. Is it any way okay. possible we could maybe re-navigate if everyone, it coordinates with everyone else? If not, I'll see what I can do to make it. Yeah, I'm open. Yeah, I'm definitely open to that. There's actually a, um, it's a all girls ATV event that's already going on on that Saturday. Or we, like I said, we can pick, um, we can check it out, see what pricing is. It might be a little high. Um, but we can also, uh, looks like it starts at $40, um, do our, our thing at the Gofflin Splash or over at the Queen Creek, um, thing. So, okay. yeah, yeah, that's, uh, okay, that what we'll, yeah, that's what we'll plan on, um, for now, um, for that week, then July 6th, we'll all get together and, um. Find something yeah, to do. find something to do. We'll make sure we, you know, everybody's, you know, we got time. We get time to plan it out and mm -hmm. wait kind of to that week even. Or so. I mean, if somebody got something different or something mm -hmm. they've been longing to do, you know, open. We, we do some pool parties, some you know. Our pool is our pool, our backyard is open too. So if everybody just wants to do something simple like that, maybe grill or something, or mm -hmm. just get together with hey, it's option. We have options. Party too. <laughs> I'm definitely always down for that. Uh, okay. okay. Bring a dish, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Desiree? Will... Is she still there? Desiree? Oh, she's there. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let me pray us out real quick. I should have prayed this out before I went into all the personal event stuff. But <laughs> um, all right. So we'll go ahead and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much for this time to come together and share on your word. We pray that you lead and guide us into our next study and um, let us have, have some fun. Um, guide us into the event that you know will work the best for us um, all so that we can come together and just be supportive as a community. Um, just getting some wellness, getting some spiritual 
advisement and nourishing um, for our, our mind, body, and spirit. Um, thank you for everybody's time and especially thank you for your time, Heavenly Father. Um, we are we are grateful for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank right. you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good week. Yep. You too. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.